Hey folks, it's great to be here with you. I'm Matt, a product manager on the Azure Monitor team. I've worked in the data and analytics space for 10 years and eight of that in monitoring. I'll be sharing about Azure Monitor and how to transition from .NET Aspire to Azure Monitor. Today, I'll cover a few questions. Why production monitoring? How do I enable Azure Monitor? And how do I transition from .NET Spire, Aspire Viewer to Azure Monitor? First, why production monitoring? The .NET Aspire Viewer is great in the development cycle. It enables rapid iteration and troubleshooting at no additional cost. But when you are running a high availability and scalable service, your monitoring solution needs to be highly available and scalable too. That describes Azure Monitor. What I've listed are a set of distinctives of production grade observability that are included in Azure Monitor. Secure data storage and query layer, alerting engine, not just the application layer, it includes Infra 2, flexible dashboarding, applying policy at scale, advanced diagnostics, where we reason over your data, extensive integrations with Slack, ServiceNow, Grafana, and more. When I think of Azure Monitor and what makes it production grade, the first thing I think of is the platform. On the right is a depiction of Azure Monitor. On the left is the data we collect using SDKs and agents. Standardizing on open telemetry. The purple square on the right is application insights. Curated experiences I will cover in a few minutes. In the middle and what sits at the foundation of all the experiences in Azure Monitor is the data platform. We can distill it down to two components. Log analytics, our logs and traces platform built on the same technology that powers Azure Data Explorer and the Azure Monitor workspace, Azure Monitor's next generation time series metrics store. Together, these provide the reliability, scale, and security that is required for modern distributed applications. Log Analytics recently announced a new log storage tier so you can better optimize your costs and select the best storage to tier that fits your needs. And Azure Monitor Workspace is absorbing more workloads within Azure Monitor, and it's built to interop with PromQL and Grafana and supports exponential histograms. With that brief overview of production monitoring, let's move on to how to enable Azure Monitor. As I mentioned earlier, it's a combination of agents and SDKs for the full experience. However, I'm gonna focus on how to collect data in the application layer. There are two paths to enablement, auto instrumentation and manual instrumentation. When you are running on an Azure resource that supports auto instrumentation, this is the easiest way to get started. You simply turn it on in Azure portal or apply it via policy. We inject the API and SDK to collect the data that powers Azure Monitor Application Insights. If you're running on a service that does not support auto instrumentation or wish to have more control or write custom code against the OpenTelemetry API, you can use manual instrumentation. The Azure Monitor OpenTelemetry distro is a single package that bundles the OpenTelemetry metrics, tracing, and logging SDKs with popular instrumentation libraries and the Azure Monitor exporter to offer a first-class open telemetry based experience on Azure Monitor. And of course, it's extensible, so you can add additional open source components, such as processors and instrumentation libraries. When it comes to languages where we do not offer a distro, such as Go, Rust, or Ruby, we're building out the infrastructure to support the ingestion of native open telemetry protocol, often referred to as OTLP. What bubbles two and three show is that we are investing in a path to ingest native OTLP first to Azure Monitor agent and eventually via a cloud ingestion endpoint. You can read more about this vision in a blog linked in the QR code. Bubble number one shows what is available today as the image uh, shows the Azure Monitor OpenTelemetry distro is a thin wrapper around the OpenTelemetry SDK. This slide shows the step-by-step. -step. 
of how to take the eShop Aspire demo and use the Azure Monitor Open Telemetry Distro to enable Azure Monitor Application Insights. I'll show you this in Visual Studio. All right, so I have downloaded the eShop demo and you're welcome to download it as well and follow along QR code. And when I pull up the eShop demo, uh, there's a few changes I've made to it to add Azure Monitor. Um, the Aspire Viewer is added by default. And then to add Azure Monitor, I first downloaded the Azure.Monitor OpenTelemetry.ASP.NET Core package, which is what we call the distro. And this was added to, I apologize, this is a, a bit hard to see here. This is added to the, the service the service defaults dependencies. And this ensures that it is added across all the services in eShop. You can see it's it's been referenced right there. And then I also moved over to the extensions in again in the uh in the service defaults and added my single line of code that initializes the open telemetry distro wrapped it in an if statement in case the connection string is not found. And then finally, I added my connection string to my secrets, secrets.json. And I was able to get to my secrets by right clicking on app post and, and heading down to manage user secrets. Where I found my connection string was in Azure, where I created an application insights resource. So what I was able to do here is in Azure portal, in the search, just look for application insights, uh, click on application insights and follow the prompts to create a resource. It takes a few steps. And then when you're able to, when the resource is created, you're able to find your connection string listed right here. And uh, and finally, I went to my program CS file under eShop app host and added, added a reference to my connection string and also referenced my connection string in each of the 10 services that are spun up in the containers of eShop. Okay, so with that, let's run the application. Okay, now we have eShop running and it also spun up the Aspire dashboard. And then separately, we also have application insights running as well. So we can go to a view called live metrics and we're able to see in near, let me make this a little bit bigger. You can see in near real time, our flow of, uh, our flow of metrics coming off the application. And the first thing I, I wanted to share is that if you go to structured logging in the Aspire viewer, and you also hop over to a sample telemetry stream in live metrics, you can see that what we're looking at is the same, the same events. It's the same events coming off the Aspire viewer and flowing into application insights. So if you're familiar with, if you're familiar with the Aspire viewer, uh, you can you can easily transition over to looking at a very similar thing in the live metrics view with an application insights. And similarly to uh, to the Aspire viewer, we also have the metrics here and um, and then you know one additional one additional feature we have in in live metrics is the ability to filter down to the specific telemetry the specific telemetry stream that you'd like to see. So if you for example, only want to see your exceptions, you can filter down to, to, to just see your exceptions. Okay, so now that you've seen the similarities between the Aspire, .NET Aspire viewer and live metrics, I want to zoom in a bit more to application insights 
to show you what's available in production monitoring. So let's let's zoom in here and pop out a live metrics. And show you the investigative the investigative tools that are available to you. First thing I, I want to show is uh, a tool called Smart Detection. Actually, before we get there, what I want to show you is Application Map. Application Map shows you a topographical view of your application. So you're able to see all of your services, how they call out to dependencies. We call these lines edges. And so when you see when you see red, that indicates that there's an issue that you can drill into further. We also have something called Intelligent View and in Application Insights, where if you enable Intelligent View, it's able to cut the noise out of the out of the edges. And if errors are transient or short lived, it, they'll they'll disappear, and you'll your noise to signal ratio will improve. So now we will go to an application with a bit more telemetry and show you smart detections. Smart detections found all on its own without me doing anything, just looking at my telemetry, it detected a failure anomaly in a dependency, and it gives me information about that dependency, it tells me what, what it was calling out to, what the result code was, and for each of these, um, each of the operations that are issues I'm able to drill into the telemetry further by following the links. The other, the other view in Application Insights that's useful um, is, and that I want to show you is a performance view. Performance view is is a is a powerful view, and uh, and I apologize if this is a bit small, but you're able to to see the the latency of requests for performance tuning. And for instance, you could drill into your 95th percentile and find issues where, uh, find, for instance, a time range where your app is experiencing issues. Um, this arrow indicates a deployment. So perhaps it's after a deployment and now we're seeing a, a spike in latency of requests. You're able to zoom into that and <clears throat> right away it will bring right to the surface, what operation, um, and this represents a distributed tr transaction, um, is causing issues in your application. And by drilling in further, we're able to see right away what some of the common properties of this uh, transaction are, uh, where it's seeing the issues and what Chicago, that's interesting, 56% uh, of the requests are from Chicago, uh, you're able to see uh, you're able to see more information about this particular issue, and then drill into individual samples of the request. So, and by drilling drilling down further, we're able to see that this well, interestingly, this one was actually generated by a synthetic test, um, which Application Insights offers, and then we're able to see the the trace through the uh, including the calls out to the SQL database. Um, a couple of retries and the exceptions themselves. And then for this particular exception, we're able to see how uh, the exception message, uh, the type, even the failed method. And at this point, you can either create a work item or, uh, or you can go to your specific line of code and, and make a fix. Uh, and, <clears throat> And then, you know, you can actually even take this a step further. And when you're dealing with real users um, or you want more of a the perspective of a real user, um, we're able to hop over to, um, to some additional linked telemetry, for instance, which the user flows experience, which is able to show all of the steps before and after the failure uh, and these are all adjustable. You can add additional steps here. Um, and this user flow is, is very flexible. Uh, you can use this to see how users are traversing throughout your application um, and, and learn where they're hitting dead ends. Uh, and 
<clears throat> and so this is the this is just a small uh, sample of the real user monitoring available in application insights there's one final thing i just wanted to share uh before we're we're at time and that is uh within the Within the performance view, we've recently introduced a new feature called code optimizations. And this, this feature reasons over your data and um, particularly your, your code and your application to make suggestions on how to, uh, how to optimize your code for, um, for improved memory and CPU usage. So for instance, here's an example of an optimization um, where it says a, a particular um, a particular method is causing unusually high memory, and then it gives a suggestion on how to improve it. Um, this is this is pretty powerful, um, and it really just is an example of how we're trying to bring insights directly directly to you. All right, so with that, um, I shared a bit about how .NET Aspire Viewer is, is similar to the Live Metrics View and Application Insights, and you can transition from one to the other um, fairly easily. And I shared how, um, how Application Insights has Live Metrics, and, um, and that's very similar to the metrics that you see in, in the .NET Aspire Viewer as well. And uh, and lastly, I shared a bit about the diagnostic views and application insights. First, the application map, uh, which shows a topographical view of your application and uh, helps and shares shows the dependencies and where, you know, wherever you're seeing red is there's issues where you can drill in further. And then I showed the performance view, how you can optimize your, your application, both, both the code as part of code optimizer and also slow calls as well out to dependencies. All right, everything I showed you today is, is all publicly documented. And so this is a reference to documentation. And, and lastly, if you, if you're having issues or you're running in, running into, um, you know, need some advice or, or you're running into a blocker, feel free to reach out to me directly. My email is otel at microsoft.com. That'll, those those emails will just go directly to me. Um, thank you so much, and uh, it's it's been fun to be here today with you.